today, uh, Photoshop replacement is all about replacing items within your photo. There is multiple ways to do this assignment. Uh, you could be using your own photos, or this is the first opportunity where I'm going to allow you where you can start to shop online for an image, all right? So a couple things when you are shopping online for an image. Uh, right here, I'm going to be putting uh, my dog's head onto a portrait of a king. <clears throat> so what I did is I did a Google uh, image search for king portraits. Uh, now, what I want you to take note of, though, is where the tools is. So right here where I'm clicking tools, and you have your option with your images to pick a large image type. All right, it's going to default to any size, but I want you to change, not where it says all, I want you to change where it says tools, go to size, and then pick large images. Uh, the reason for this is that now you're only going to be dealing with images that are a large size. When you do go to take them from the internet, we want to make sure that we're taking images that are a high resolution. When uh, you click on the image that you like, uh, you'll see that the size of the image is going to be um, a good size, but we do need to go to the website, okay? So right here is the size. It's 1310 pixels by 2000 pixels. Anything over 1000 is going to be a good size to play around with in Photoshop. So don't take the image from here. These are all thumbnails, all right? I'm going to go to the actual website. I'm going to click on the picture because uh, sometimes you know they don't allow you to actually uh, grab the picture but here's a little download. So here I'm going to now grab this picture and just drag it to my desktop. All right. So when you do drag your image to your desktop you should see the image open up. Uh, you can't see it because I got Photoshop open here but yes the image that I just opened uh, is right up here of the king okay so I dragged it to my desktop and watch this little trick here's my image and now I'm going to drag it to the Photoshop icon on my dock and that should open up for us well, let's give it a second but if it doesn't it probably didn't because it was did that little funky thing so here there we go uh, there is the image of the king so you can see that it's now opened up in Photoshop and I am going to be using this other image of my dog, Woody, to incorporate into this image. So I'm not going to show you things that you already know how to do. You know, so here's my image of my dog, Woody. Uh, I've already pre-selected uh, what I want to uh, copy from this particular image here. So I have everything pretty much, you know, uh, the stuff that I need uh, on my portrait already selected. Okay. Now, I want to show you up here, though, where it says Select and Mask. This particular page or dialog box allows you to do a few things about, like, getting stuff like around hair of the dog. All right, so again, that's under Select and Mask. There is actually a little button right here where it says Refine Hair. Um, that will kind of help you out, but I'm going to show you how to do something else here. Uh, this brush over here on the left hand side that actually looks like it has some hairs coming off of it right here. I'm going to use my zoom tool. I'm going to kind of zoom in on uh, that. But you can actually see here, if I go backwards a uh, step. So where I click that refine hair business, all right, it actually did a pretty good job of refining the hair. Okay, again, if I go up to this particular brush, this is the stuff that I'm trying to get rid of, this background gray stuff. And, you know, basically, if you take this particular brush, the second brush down over here on the left hand side, and you start to draw in between those areas, well, sure, it's going to actually start to get rid of those areas. Uh, but that refine hair, if I click on that button, kind of does it for you. All right. There is a little bit of a gray haze showing up around the hair, but we'll see if that actually gets rid of uh, what we need to get rid of. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So right now I'm in this definitely refine edges dialog box. I have to click OK and look at what it did to the hair. It actually did a pretty good selection of the hair that's around Woody. 
all right? So again, you can see all this stuff over here. It got a little confusing over here. So what I can do is I can go uh, back again to my selected mask with my hair and then kind of draw in over some of this stuff that should be incorporated into my layer mask. And then when I go ahead and click OK, well, you can see, you know, there's the stuff that it has been selected. Remember, you also have the ability to edit within the quick mask mode. So remember, right underneath your colors, right over here on the left hand side of the screen, if I click that red, it's going to put that red mask over the stuff that is not selected. Well, hey, I want this stuff selected. So remember, white is what we don't see and black will draw in the red. So if I go to my paintbrush with white selected here, <clears throat> you can see that I am now getting rid of that red stuff that I want incorporated into my image. So I have all these hairs that I need to pick up. You know, I can kind of, uh, you know, do that a little bit better. Uh, to incorporate the stuff that I need to incorporate. And again, zoom around your image. If I switch that to red, to black, then I can draw in the red where it's needed. Okay. Uh, some red uh, definitely got uh, over here. So again, I'm going to go back to white, go back and make sure that I'm including everything that I need to be including. So again, this is me editing in what is called the quick mask mode. Definitely, it puts this red color mask over your image and it shows you what is selected and what is not selected. So especially if you're using that refine hair button, it can get a little tricky as far as what is hair and what is my dog's ear in this case. All right. So once I got everything selected and it looks like the red is off, I can go out of this quick mask mode and kind of see what was uh, you know there go back to the quick mass mode and kind of draw in the red where it's needed to but remember I can always fix this stuff up later on once I incorporate and bring my image into the document so right now it's looking like you know everything that I want captured out of my dog Woody is captured so I'm gonna go out of this mode so I've just cop you know selected this and now I'm going to go to command C which is my good old copy I'm going over to my image here of the king and command V is where I'm now going to paste in my image. You can see that the image pasted in too big and actually some of your images are actually going to paste in real super big. So if you go to command T, command T is our transforming tool. You grab a hold of one of the corners and what it will do is it will trans uh, it will transform your object or your image to being a little bit more accurate to your size. You also will have the ability to rotate your image at this point. Uh, but just know you will never want to hold down on the shift key because if you hold down on the shift key, that's where your image is going to start to get skewed. All right, so no need for the shift key. Uh, again, you are just grabbing one of the corners. So once you get it approximately in place, I'm going to double click on that box to apply my transformation. Now I'm going to use my zoom tool, my little magnifying glass tool, and I'm going to zoom in on what I am trying to incorporate here. Again, my dog's port, uh, head onto this portrait of our king here. Okay. So a couple things you might need to do on the layer of the king is you might actually have to get rid of some of the king's head. Once you replace your, uh, you know, my dog Woody's head on top of this king here, you know, some of the king might be showing up within my picture and I want to get rid of that. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to use what we call the cloning tool. So watch this. The clone tool is the fifth or sixth tool down on the right hand side if you have your tools doubled up. And if I click on the cloning tool, your cursor will come up right here and it will basically just show you how big of a cursor size you're working with. I'm going to reduce my uh, size down here a little bit. And if you click, it will, hey, it's not going to do anything. You can't use the clone stamp until you actually hit cl uh, option click to actually define your source point. So watch this. 
I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit my option key. Notice how the key, like your cursor changes. I'm going to click once with my keypad. And now I'm actually drawing over the object of the king. I go over here. I'm going to re-option, uh, re-click so that I can get that part of the curtain there to you know flow over the king where I need it to. Now I can even take some of this dark background here, option click, and now start to go over the king because I know I'm going to need to get rid of some of his head. All right. So here is my move tool on the very top left hand side and I can use that to obviously move my dog Woody's head into position. All right. Now, Woody, you know, how do I know if Woody's head is proportionate to the king? Well, you're going to have to do some playing around, what's going to look normal here. But also, here's another cool feature with Photoshop. So over here on my layer panel, all right, and I can also kind of move this off to the side here so I can see what I'm working with. I can actually bring the opacity down of this Woody layer. All right, so back to my move tool. Now I can kind of position maybe Woody's eyes so it will be close to where the eyes are. Yeah, it actually looks like Command T. I should probably shrink Woody's head down a little bit so that, again, his eye is kind of showing up where the king's eye is. Maybe his collar, uh, Woody's collar is kind of showing up where it needs to be. I can go ahead and double click, bring back my opacity, of course, so I can bring that back to 100%. And now I need to start getting rid of some things off of the Woody picture, all right, in order to make him look a little bit more cohesive, all right? So again, I can actually bring down my opacity so I can see through the Woody picture to kind of figure out what I need to do. And you guessed it, I'm gonna create a blank layer mask right here. So I had nothing selected, all right? I created a blank layer mask, it's completely blank. White is what we see, black is what we don't see. So if I were to go ahead and maybe bring Woody up a little bit more so I can see what I'm working with here, so I can see his collar a little bit better, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, with my brush, and again, I'm gonna make my brush nice and defined, all right? So I'm gonna bring the hardness level up to 100, bring my brush down a little bit. And now I can actually start to, you know, get rid of his collar here. So I'm actually just drawing over parts of the image of Woody. Uh, again, you know, I might incorporate that collar, might not. And start to actually erase stuff that I don't need. Okay? You can always check to see how you're doing by bringing the opacity completely back uh, to where you want it. And then uh, now I'm going through and kind of clipping off a few things that I don't necessarily need on the picture of Woody here, uh, just to refine that. I still have the bow showing up of the king, but maybe I might leave that. I don't know. I'll see how it looks, you know, once I'm kind of have things completed here. I'm going ahead and, you know, again, kind of getting rid of some of the stuff around uh, Woody here. Uh, in order to make him look like he's actually in this portrait of the king, okay? Now, once I get things looking a little bit closer to where they should be as far as like proportion-wise and everything, now I need to actually work on making sure that this looks cohesive with the actual image that I'm trying to put it into, all right? We have adjustments that you could make, all right? There are adjustment layers. Uh, so over here, we have all of our different adjustments. We have brightness and contrast. We have our levels, curves. But also, we can highlight our layer. We can go straight up to image, adjustments of our image. And then I can come over here. Now, again, we don't have all of our options because of, mistakenly, I'm still clicked on my layer mask. So let me click over here on the actual image of Woody. And now I can go to image, adjustments. You see all my adjustments here. Brightness and contrast and hue and saturation are going to be, you know, and even possible color balance are going to be the three things that you play around with the most in order to get your replacement to look cohesive with the actual image. I'm going to go to brightness and contrast. You can see that I can make this darker. I can make this brighter. So it definitely needs to be a little bit darker. All right. And then also I need to go with some contrast. 
you know, maybe boosting up the contrast a little bit to make sure that my image is looking nice and cohesive. I just hit Command-0 to kind of bring us back to the full page right here. And, you know, it's looking pretty good. I can always go back to that. I just hit OK. I actually think Woody's head is kind of looking kind of small on this. So I'm going to actually increase his head size a little bit. Maybe move his collar down so it looks like it's, you know, where it's supposed to be. And now that's looking pretty good. My light source, you know, I could definitely tell that it's darker on this side than it is on this side. So my light source is actually a little bit backwards for this particular image. Not that you, you know, his head looks really good, but if, just to show you, if I go to, uh, if I go to image and I go to rotate uh, or image rotation, I can actually flip now, not my whole image. I want to go to, sorry about that. I want to go to edit. I'm going to go to transform. And I'm going to go to flip horizontal, right? So that's me actually, and you know, really kind of doesn't look too bad having his head flipped the other way, all right? Um, you know, for this particular picture, I can go back to my command T. Maybe I want to have his head kind of put, you know, up a little bit more. Uh, so again, I just hit command T and I just rotated. But actually, oops. Edit undo. Uh, his the lighting looks much more consistent with having his head facing this way rather than the other way. It looks fine. I you know I, there's no uh, thing you know showing me that his head should be facing the other way. Obviously, if you're doing like a profile of someone, you know that's a little bit different when you flip someone's head. Uh, but doing it this way, I think, works out pretty well for this particular image. Of course, I want to zoom back in and make sure, like, you know, that everything... So, like, this part of the, uh, the collar of the king is looking a little weird. So, hey, I'm going to go back to my background layer. I'm going to go back to my cloning tool. Hit Option. And now I can actually clone out that part of the scarf there of the actual real king so that Woody's head is looking a little bit more legit within the picture. All right. Once you have color corrected, once you have uh, done all the things that you need to do, you know, you could do some burning and dodging with your picture as well. Remember, your burn tool uh, will make something darker. Your dodge tool will make something lighter. So if you do need to, to add, you know, if I want to go ahead and up to my picture of Woody here and I wanted to make this side of his face a little bit brighter to go along with the, uh, you know, highlights and shadows, I could surely do that. Uh, I don't want to do that, but I'm just showing you that I can do that. Um, if I wanted to make something darker, I could go ahead and go to my burn tool, make that a little bit smaller. And then again, I can burn in some of this stuff. So let's maybe I want to have this side of Woody be a little bit darker. Uh, maybe have his little mohawk there be a little bit darker as well. Uh, so again, I am choosing to darken in the stuff uh, that needs to be darkened in. And again, I'm just kind of tweaking my image a little bit more, going back to my layer mask, uh, going back to my brush and knocking off a couple of this stuff off of his chin here uh, to make that look a little bit better within the image as well. Okay. Once you have everything uh, that you feel the way it should look, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to go to File, Save As. Remember, I'm done with this, so I'm going to save it on my computer. I'm going to change uh, that format. Um, again, if it doesn't allow you to change the format to a JPEG, then you can always hit Save as a Copy. And then you go to changing that as a JPEG. I'm going to title this image King uh, Woody. So I can find my image easily on my desktop. I go ahead and hit Save. And I go ahead and hit OK once I am done. All right. Uh, if you want to continue to work on it, then again, save to the cloud. Uh, and again, uh, you'll be able to work on it the following day. That is it for a replacement photo. Remember, you have options. You could be replacing the entire background of your image. Uh, you could be re 
placing the head of someone on the image. And also the more practical thing is that if, even if you have a group picture, uh, what you can do with the group picture is interchanging people's faces from one set of pictures to the next. You know, if three people were looking good and one person wasn't, and you have another picture of them from the same session, it makes it really easy to just steal their face from one picture and plop it onto the other picture so that everybody is looking good. All right. Uh, once you are done, you're submitting one replacement photo to Schoology uh, so that you can turn in your assignment. All right. And that is it for a replacement photo. One of the most practical things to do in Photoshop. But also this is where we get into some ethical things because, hey, we're replacing elements of a photo. So this is no longer a real image. You know, this wasn't a real image anyway. It was a painting. Uh, but with this particular picture, again, we would uh, title this a photo illustration anytime you are doing something where you are replacing parts of an image. Hope you enjoyed it. Get your assignments done.